everybody. I'm going to um, ask you to all unmute yourselves because we probably don't have control over your muting, but just say hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Kate. Hi, Meg. Hi, Kate. Back on vacation. Yes. Yes. We got home Friday. Good. My mom morning, Kathy. Hi, Mom. Hi. <laughs> morning. Well, good morning. We'll do more chat. Um, there you, go. you know, as as the day progresses. But um, as you can see, Alan and I are in the same space this morning. That's right. And, hey. Hello. I'll ask everybody to mute again for a moment. Very right, cool. Yes. Who is this? So we can start giving announcements now. Um, so first announcement is that, as you can see, there are, there's a camera aimed at the church piano and there is a camera aimed at Alan and I in the organ. And this is the beginning of different forms of reopening. The deacons have made a decision that we will continue the Zoom worship indefinitely at 1030. And for those that would like an in-person service, we will be offering an in-person version of church earlier in the morning, probably around 9.15 or 9.30. So uh, we'll, we'll give you an exact timing before next week. It will be limited seating. There are three pews open on any given side. We, we came in and sort of set everything off, um, but Given our numbers, that's still probably plenty of pews, but if you come to church next week for an in-person experience, bring your mask and plan to wear it in the church. And there you go. That's, that's what's happening here. That's what we know so far. And Alan will be here probably towards the end of that worship to maybe give us like a closing music because he, of course, is also supporting Our Lady of the Mountains earlier in the day. So he's, he's a two-church guy, two-church musician and technician and producer. Um, I also want to acknowledge today, give gratitude again for the team that helped last week, Jeanette and Tom and our guest minister, uh, Dan Weir. I want to say thank you always to Chris Doctor, who's doing production behind the scenes again today. And uh, Jeanette provided us with some special music this week on her flute. So we're, that's gonna be our centering music this morning once we go to that, which will be in a few minutes or a minute. Um, and let's see, announcements. I just wanna make sure we all remember, this is the last week of this round of racial justice conversations. This has been a really tremendous experience for the people that are participating, I can tell you, I think all of us have learned a lot about ourselves. And some of us have even done this series once already and we still learned something. I really do encourage you, if you are interested in this, it's not scary. It, it can be, you know, provocative conversations and you'll learn something about yourself, but it's well worth doing in these times. And we will be running that series again at least once a day, uh, once a week maybe two times a week, starting quite soon. And we're reaching out to members of our communities, um, the broader community for additional participation. But if you are interested, please do RSVP the church so we can keep you posted on exact timing. We are having also our every week, the Friday five o'clock cocktails and Christian conversation. We have a youth leadership team meeting next, uh, tomorrow at one o'clock at the pavilion, just like we did two weeks ago. I will send out a reminder to the families, so don't worry. And we will be having our ongoing youth choir. And meanwhile, uh, Billy is back from his vacation and he worked with the choir again today. So they are working on music for us and we're excited to hear what comes next. Those are all my announcements. Does Anybody else have an announcement that I didn't mention yet? You'd have to unmute yourself if you do. All right, there being none, we'll do, we'll do the prayers shortly, but we're gonna start by centering ourselves with Jeanette's music. 
So I'm going to turn it over to Roots. Um, I'm supposed to tell you that this is Ash Grove. It's a Welsh folk song that Jeanette is performing for us. All right. <laughs> Jeanette. Oh, everybody, you can unmute yourselves for some applause. I, I, I think at this point, we have all the all ideas are out the window. That, that, that sounded great. Share with each other is worth applause. That was very nice. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. She played both parts, by the way. Yes. Both parts. Wow. Very nice. nice job. Thank you. I did not play both parts at the same time. <laughs> pretty much a miracle worker though there so um this is the time in our service when we move into prayers and so i'm going to invite first prayers of concern that might be raised up by the community and i do have a couple that i want to start us off with um i'm not sure Okay, Roy and Nancy are here. Roy, do you guys want to share about your daughter? You'll have to unmute yourselves. Yeah, our daughter has been diagnosed with breast cancer and she's undergoing treatments at Mass General Hospital. And she's in the best place she could be, I believe. In addition to that, our daughter-in-law is a nurse scientist working on cancer research at Mass General Hospital. So she has taken Kristen under her wing, under yeah, her wing, yeah. Yes, sir, please. We ask for your prayers. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Roy and Nancy. And we've been saying them since we first learned, but today the whole community joins us in that prayer. And the eight o'clock also held your daughter up in prayer. Um, I just wanna say it's good to see Cheryl on the other side of you know, a significant event in her life, that surgery, that was another step. Um, so we're glad that you are home. And I was watching the text fly back and forth as people were praying for her and Tom was giving updates. Um, it's a community full of love um, and hope. There are other prayers. Uh, from this morning at 8 o'clock, a prayer for the life of a young woman named Jennifer who died um, quite suddenly and with deep sorrow by the community that loves her. Prayers of gratitude for our first responders. We saw them in action yesterday, both the Bartlett and the Jackson teams handling car accidents and fires and medical emergencies. Um, that they shall be shielded emotionally and bodily and psychologically through these things and that those that they go out to help will also receive the best of them um, and receive compassion, compassion and support and healing from this community, which is certainly what happened yesterday. And may that always be the case. And, Aren't we grateful that they respond so quickly to us when we call them? I would ask now for any prayers of concerns that this community wants to lift up. And you'd have to unmute yourselves in order to say a prayer. Sue. Yes, I have a dear friend who has been battling kidney disease and he goes in for 
very serious surgery next Wednesday, and I pray that it will be successful. So please pray for my friend, Roland. Roland, okay. For Roland, for his kidney, for the surgeons that guide, may their hands be guided, and may re he receive healing and restoration if that is possible for him. Thank you. Other prayers of concern today? I'll go Reverend Gail. Okay, Kevin. Prayer for Reverend Gail and Chris that I might have a love as great as they have someday. And um, prayer for the New Hampshire State Troopers and prayer for medical personnel that they may know the angels are with them. And um, prayer for my uh, good family friend who passed away years ago, Zoltan Petro, who was a good man. And lastly, um, prayer that our country will, will, will choose peace over chaos. Thank you, Kevin. Those are, those are powerful prayers. Um, we do continue to lift up those who are undergoing different kinds of treatment and procedures. Uh, Kevin, who is undergoing a procedure tomorrow. Cheryl for her recovery and her ongoing treatment. Judy, Deanna, Sasha, Jim, Barry, Richard, Nancy. And Alan has one, and, and, and Alan is in prayers for his shoulder and some PT. Uh, we pray also for those that continue to live with cancer who, are, as we've heard, are living with new diagnoses. We pray for those that have undergone treatment and are somewhere on that journey. And we pray for those who are now in hospice. And um, the way station asks that you will uphold the life of Lloyd. Um, he has been one of our beloved guest members, and he is now on hospice at Mineral Springs. And so we especially ask for prayers for him. He, he's been a special part of our community. We turn now, I believe, to gratitude and joy. And I certainly, on behalf of our family, do a shout out for the covenant that Sarah and Miru made together in Manhattan on Roosevelt Island this past weekend and the sharing of all of us in that covenant and the courage of our children and people of all ages to make promises to each other in the midst of these times and the vision and the hope that comes with it. Other prayers of joy or celebration. You'll need no, to... I'll go wherever. <laughs> okay, Kevin. No, go ahead. There's nobody else speaking, Kevin. You can go. Oh, I thought someone else was going. No, go I'm ahead, sorry. please. I, I'm, I'm grateful for the campground and all the farm animals and all the dogs that visit, and all the butterflies. And I'm grateful to Reverend Gale and our church because I'm getting a cat today because of all of you. Yes, we're happy about the cat. Kit, go ahead. Uh, we just had our daughter and her family here for 10 days and it was wonderful and it's just a, uh, Thanksgiving prayer for the good times and good memories that were made and hopefully we'll all stay healthy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And one last shout out for any prayers of celebration. Unmute yourselves if you want to share anything. I know that we've had some special anniversaries and some birthdays happening this, this week, this month for the creative ways that we find to celebrate in these times. For the love that we find crossing our paths, love of all kinds. 
We pray also for our leaders, those in our own community. We pray for those that are leading our state, leading our nation, and affecting decisions in this world. That the people that lead us will represent us well and reflect the values and the hopes and the dreams of the community in its fullness and support those and work together and recognize in each other the sacredness of life and dignity and the need for sustainability of justice and compassion and simply life for all people. We give thanks for those that have answered a call, believing in their call to protect those that serve in the military those who serve as first responders. And again, we, we pray for the best to be called out in those who have taken up this vocation and also that those that make decisions, calling them into certain places will do so with care for the lives of those that have been placed in harm's way. We pray for those that continue to live with COVID, for those that continue to live in uncertainty, even within our own nation. And we pray for our sister communities in Zimbabwe and Honduras in particular, but all the places where those we love live and remind us that we are all bound up together. Please join me in a moment of prayer. Oh, holy God, we raise our voices one at a time. We raise them up to you. You heard the prayers of people at eight o'clock. You heard the prayers of the people here at 1030. We have wept and laughed together. We are trying to make sense of this world and this life right now together. We ask you to remind us what binds us through the beauty of our diversity into one body, bound together and tied together through your love. May you work through us even when we are messy and imperfect so that we too may be vessels carrying love into the world. We offer you now a moment of silence And then I would ask everybody to unmute that God may hear all of our voices raised together in community as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, <coughs> who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> And you can go ahead and mute yourselves again. We're, we're trying out what it's like to share our voices a little bit more in a live sense. And we know it's messy and that there are sound delays, but this is how we are church together. And yes, we are a little bit messy, but that's how we do it in these days and times. And I think it's important to hear our voices together now that we're starting, especially now that we're starting to be in the same space. Um, and we have the chance to have live music and live voices. Let us celebrate this, this coming together again. I ask you now to enter a mo moment of contemplation and listening as we hear the scripture. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verses 24 through 40. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. 
Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Kandache, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from this earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask, does your prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look here, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns, until he came to Caesarea. So ends the reading. And now I would ask that you would enter into prayer with me. O holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. The stories that we're reading from Acts were requested by the people that are gathering at five o'clock on Fridays. We started with first with well, the book of Acts, we, we began with Luke itself, and we, we studied through Lent, and then we studied through Pentecost to look at what was happening in the early church, and the book, the Acts of the Apostles, continues that story. And so today we focus on the very brief account of the ministry of Philip, who is one of the apostles of Christ. And the excerpt that we are focusing on is part of his ministry, he traveled to many different places, and I just want to briefly retrace what you heard in this reading, that Philip had been in Samaria, and then he was sent out onto the wilderness road by the prompting of an angel. And he didn't know what he would find there, but what he found there was another man who was riding in a chariot, and this was a very prominent figure in the court of the Kandachi, the queens of what we now call Ethiopia. And he had, the, the, this particular individual who is described as an Ethiopian eunuch in the scripture had been to Jerusalem apparently to worship and then was coming back and that's when Philip meets him. And the eunuch was reading scripture inside the chariot when they had this encounter. In particular, he was reading from the passage of Isaiah 53. And this encounter is so important, but I want to start by saying this person in the chariot, is on, he's the pivotal figure of this story. Philip is so important. This, the prompting of the spirit is so important. But it may be the only time we hear about this man's story, and yet his story resonates down through the generations and the centuries, not just with us, but an entire nation. In the Ethiopian tradition, and I want to bring us into the images of, of this ca character, so we're going to start looking at images while I narrate for you a, a little bit. He actually has a name. So in this first image, for those who are able to see the screen, we have a, a, 
a detail from an icon. And on the left, we see Philip. And on the right, we see the Ethiopian. And in many paintings, the Ethiopian is being baptized. And in others, they're discuss discussing the scripture from Isaiah. And he's sometimes variously clad and unclad. And I want us to watch the migration of the ethnicity and the representation by different artists of both Philip and the Ethiopian. It's very important how each of these characters are seen and named and claimed. Because in the Ethiopian tradition, and let's just go to the next slide so we can uh, see a couple of the icons that depict his his moment of being blessed by the word. On the left is an icon that shows Philip baptizing him. The Ethiopian had the word open to him. He was already a person of faith who had gone to Jerusalem to worship, although it is very likely he would not have been allowed into the temple because Deuteronomy says that if you have been castrated, you can't enter the temple because you're not a whole person and you don't have a whole body. So we know already that the eunuch, because of something that was done to him, couldn't enter the temple of certain traditions, would have been othered in his own culture, set apart and aside from everyone else because it prevented him from having loyalties to kindred, from creating rival bloodlines that might try to seize the power of the throne through the power of the treasury and his influence. He was set apart everywhere. And then Philip comes to him and he hears in this book of Isaiah and in the other accounts that Philip tells him, this chance to belong wholly for just who he is, as he is, body, mind, and spirit. And so when we go to the next image, we see a representation that is very European. This is an early painting by Rembrandt. And what I want you to see, if you're able to look closely, if you're able to, there are three faces. There's the face of the eunuch who is kneeling down, receiving baptism. And then there are two other servants that have been traveling with the eunuch as portrayed by Rembrandt. One has a text open to the page that both Philip and the eunuch were describing, and there's another young man kneeling, probably with some of the clothing that the eunuch took off in order to be baptized in water. They all have similar features. It's believed that Rembrandt used one model to paint all three characters because he used models and he painted from life and from sketches. And so in order to be respectful, he would have used what he had in his context, but he had very little to relate to. So we, we see the context of Rembrandt here and what he believed Philip might have looked like, somebody that looked more like Rembrandt than the eunuch. And I'm gonna argue that that's probably not the case. And then we move to the next image and we see actually what the Ethiopians believed Philip and the eunuch looked like. And this is important because again, we see a different ethnicity we see darker skin. We see the, fig, the, the features of somebody who grew up in the African continent. And in the next image, the same. We're going to see Philip baptizing and the Holy Spirit coming down on the eunuch. In the Ethiopian tradition, in the Ethiopian church, he's not called the eunuch. He has a name. His name is Baruch. And in other traditions, he's Simeon Baruch. And I think it's always important in our time, as in this time, that we never get stuck on labels. The labels may change. Race did not have the same connotation in their day that it does for us now. Nationality and tribalism certainly meant a lot to people. But this man had privilege, wealth, power, literacy, education. He he had so much at his hands, even though he was not fully acknowledged in any tradition until he was baptized into the Christian faith. And 
this one man on this road in the wilderness brought back the stories that were shared with him by Philip into his nation, which was already practicing Judaism. And they wove the stories of the gospel and the encounters with Christ and Philip into their tradition. And he is the person that helped to found with Philip's inspiration, the Christian Ethiopian church that still exists today. Unbroken, that single encounter on the road became the tradition for an entire nation of people. And it is still alive and being practiced and transforming lives even now. Not all the practices are healthy ones, but many of them are. There's a fluidity and a tolerance that's amazing in this religion. It has also absorbed and welcomed the tradition of Islam. And so it really folds together Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. It celebrates the best of humanity and sometimes, unfortunately, the most damaging practices. But this eunuch in this intersection in the road became a person with a name and he gave, though he could not bear children, an entire legacy to his people. Let us go to the next image and see that he served a queen who too also had a name. And her name is remembered and shown in archeology. span Meritake, I believe is her name. The five o'clock group heard it on Friday and now I can't remember the pronunciation. So here I am talking about names without having a name at my fingertips. But I just wanna say that he served a queendom. He served a, a lineage of queens. And so another important and sometimes lost or erased part of the story is that there were women of power who had been exchanging texts with the Jewish leaders since the time of Solomon and that it is possible that the text that, that Simeon Baruch was reading belonged to his queen because she had received it long ago or her ancestors had received it from Solomon. And as we move forward in the images, we see how Philip is portrayed. He, he's portrayed in 1611 as, again, as a European. And then one more image, in the next image, we still see him being portrayed as a European. And yet again, I would argue, as we will see in the next image, that the face on the right is taken from a tomb of an Egyptian really in the same time that Philip would have been practicing. And this man is a man with dark skin and curly hair and brown eyes. And it is very likely that both Christ and his followers, as well as the Ethiopian, would have looked much more like the man on the right than the man on the left, who is another portrait of St. Philip. And so, we have seen God in our own context and we have used what we know in order to translate and share God with each other. But let us remember that the reality is complex and that it is as nuanced as somebody's name and the many different groups that they may have affinity or affiliation with. And so in the next image, let us see how a contemporary artist, Mr. Goodnight, sees the same experience. Philip is on the right and he is baptizing the Simeon Baroque character from that story. And it is an exuberant and an empowering image when this artist takes this story and makes it his own and sees his spiritual ancestors, sees liberation, sees embracing and belonging within the baptism and the, the blessing that comes upon Simeon Baroque. And then let us go to the next image. This is the final image of today and let us look again and see how first the Ethiopians on the left saw Simeon Baroque who is really at the heart, the patriarch of their church 
the character in the middle who is that same character being baptized in Mr. Goodnight's art. And then yet another contemporary artist showing the unit. We can stop the images and look at each other and see in each other's face that we each have a name and that within us lives a complexity of stories and identities. He was a eunuch, this man that we're talking about. So he was sexually different. So the queer community embraces him and his story as part of their legacy and a connection of all who feel different and othered LGBTQ into the fullness of the Christian family. People who identify as people of color see in this character someone who received the word and founded an entire church and he was a man of influence women of color may see in his 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 leader the queen their own story and what has been canceled or erased or hidden from them I invite you to see what, what affinity you have for Simeon Baruch, for Philip, for the queen who sent him with freedom to study and worship in another place and then received back the stories that he encountered on the road and that she helped empower his ability to make it part of the culture of her land. I invite us to see in each other not causes, not political parties, not labels, but people with names and stories. May we get past the things that divide us and become curious and ask each other questions along the way on our journey on this road and put a name and a face to the things that we have not yet understood and know that God has moved us into these connections as an opportunity to deepen our understanding of the whole wide world that God has created and poured love out into. God is bigger than our labels. God is bigger than our boundaries and our borders and our walls and all the things that we say make us a small community. God and the Spirit break down these things and call us into more complicated connection. And it isn't easy and it isn't comfortable but this is the love that we are called to share. And it began as early as the days of Philip and Simeon Baruch and their encounter on the road and that one meeting that changed the face of a nation. May it work in us the way it worked in the lives of Simeon's people. Thanks be to God. I'm going to invite you now to recall that we continue to keep our own promises and covenants as a community, that we are present to each other in need and blessing and hope, and that part of that is your ongoing support to this church, which you can make by mailing in or dropping off your offering, which you can also act upon by going to jxncc.org and hitting the donate button. You have been stellar in maintaining your faithful support for this church, which in turn is helping people in so many different ways, which is a beacon of light, um, whether we're virtually being active or putting messages in front of this church or being present to our sister communities in other parts of the world or right here in the valley. We are alive because you are part of this church. You are part of this community. We are alive because the church lives in us. It's not in a building. It lives in us. It's in every body and face that you see gathered here today and all the ones that are traveling elsewhere and make us a bigger and broader place. We will now turn to the benediction.
And Alan, we're going to do it with the recorded music so that we have the voices underneath us. Um, you can unmute if you want, or you can stay muted. We're going to have singers underneath us, and we're going to sing the benediction together. And then Alan is going to offer us a brief interlude of closing music, and then we'll open up for chat for a little bit. And then Alan will play us out with the piano. So please join me in the benediction. some chat and then more I mean post loop post loop sorry I don't know where I am in the day <laughs> chat for a few minutes and then Alan will be playing us out shortly. It looks like back on the organ again. Oh, you guys are so quiet. Come on. Hello. <laughs> Gotta be some chat out there. Yeah. Cheryl, you look wonderful, Cheryl. God bless you. Uh, uh, thank you. I feel great. And thank okay. you all to everyone who's been wonderful. Yeah. Prayers and books and Food and food. flowers. <laughs> food, food. <laughs> you do. You look great, Cheryl. Glad it's, o glad it's over. Yes, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Is Kevin there? Kevin, yeah, if you're there. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm going to say special prayers for you tomorrow and okay. hope everything goes well. Okay? Thank you. God I miss, bless you. I miss you. I'm I'm with you right now. I'm there yeah. with you. God bless. God bless you. How are you feeling, Sue? Um, I I'm getting I'm getting better. I'm not firing on all eight, but um, mm. you know, I have no choice. I have so many people that care for me, so I darn well better not disappoint them, right? There you go. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for asking. Hey Sue, I would um, I would argue that you have twelve cylinders and not eight. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's it's, it's called great. it's called old machine oil. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's working well. <laughs> well, thank you. I think and, I think this group is um a group that teaches one another how to get through all these 
serious health issues. It seems yeah. like everybody's got something coming or going, but we use you people like you as examples and Kate as examples of how we can recover. Yeah. And Cheryl. And Cheryl. But you know, Meg, it's people like you that, you know, I think about and, um, and that help me when things are not going my way, I think of the special people in my life. And I'm looking at Colleen and Steve, and I miss you terribly. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Miss you too, Sue. Good Thank job, you. Guys. Yep, miss mm -hmm. all of you. Yeah. And Roy and Nancy will be thinking about your daughter and uh, Cheryl having just gone through this. We have some for what to do and you need a big notepad to keep track of everything you have to do. But and our, our daughter is taking a complete diary of everything that is happening. Yes, happened. absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. We, we think also of Deanna. Deanna's got some stuff coming up here. Um, yes. Let us hold Deanna as well. Yeah. I just have to yeah. let's make sure we have a socially distanced hug for everybody. Big hug. Hugs, sir. I love you. Always good. Yeah. This works. Yeah, that works too. Hmm. Oh. Yes, dear. You're a little spitfire, and I look up to you. You inspire me. Well, thank you, my dear. I surely miss you, but I send you my love and prayers. And you'll, you will do well tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be okay. Good, good. Well, given, how, given how quiet you guys all are, you're not very chatty today. We're going to let Alan play, play for us a little bit. So enjoy. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Alan's playing now, Kat. Reverend Gail. Uh, All right.